So uh, you originated this role on stage. I did. How were you initially cast in the in the stage production of it? Was it written for you, or how did I they came find you? to be told eventually, not that it was written for me, that but by the time Jordan Harrison finished it, he was thinking of me. Uh, I don't know at what point that started, but um, when he finished it, he was working on it at Club Thumb, which is a playwrights development organization, and uh, Pam McKinnon, the director, also is an important person there. And Pam sent me the play with a note, and that's how I first... And the minute I read it, I don't know if I've ever been more excited to buy a new play. I really loved it. So I have had a long, uh, uh, a long journey with it, several years now since that first reading. Shortly after that, we read it for Jordan. It was new. And then uh, we did some readings of it in the, around town. And Pam McKinnon did a workshop of it at one point, but some readings. Uh, the Mark Taper Forum in LA decided to do it, which was lovely, but it was over a year away. So by the time that arrived, um, uh, Pam McKinnon, it conflicted with a Broadway play she was directing and she had to withdraw. Les Waters directed it. I'm telling you more than you wanted to no, know. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> Les Waters directed it uh, in uh, LA and, and Playwrights Horizons. Uh, decided to do it, and uh, Anne Kaufman directed it at Playwrights Horizons. When uh, Michael Amareda, uh, the director of the film, saw the, we know each other, and he saw the film in L.A. and decided he'd like to make a film of it, and he and Jordan met, and then that happened. One day, uh, Jordan said to me, oh, Lois, it's so extraordinary you having uh, four directors. I said, <laughs> Michael, I think it's three. <laughs> and he said, I'm counting Pam, <laughs> which is proper. So yes, it's uh, extraordinary. So how did you approach the performance differently on stage and then on film? Um, because I was so familiar with it and had played it on stage and was about to play it on stage again, we made the film just before the New York production went into rehearsal. Um, how did I prepare differently or? Just how did you approach it? I mean, you're acting for a live audience versus acting for the camera. It, does it change the performance or is it the same? Oh, yes, it changes. It changes because uh, because there's no audience out there and it's right here. <laughs> we, we, we all know that, don't we? <laughs> um, I was thinking about that the other day. The fact is, I remember thinking, um, well, I knew it very well. That's one thing. But, and sometimes when you begin a moment on, uh, uh, in film, there's a way in which it's just exactly like working a moment in rehearsal when you're, um, when you're finding what that moment is. And screen tends to be more like a collection of moments, maybe, but everything is a collection of moments. So I remember that feeling of, oh, yeah, I've been here before. I know where I am. Yeah, yeah. But you were doing it with different actors in I the film. I was doing it with different actors. So yes. how does that change? I mean, oh, you've got John Hammond, well, Gina Davis, and Tim Robbins. Uh, that's a pretty heavy hitter lineup there. You it got. is a pretty heavy hitter lineup. I had some lovely hitters <laughs> <laughs> before that also yes. on the stage. Yes. Um, uh, how does that change it? Everything changes, of course, when you yeah. have another partner. Yeah. Uh, you had worked with Tim before. He, he directed, directed me. You he directed Dead me Man in Walking. Dead you Man played. Walking. I'd never Susan worked with Sarandon's. him as an actor, but right. yeah, I knew it. You played it. Susan Sarandon's mother in that, right? I did. Yes. I did. Yes. So how was it, was that helpful that you had worked together yes, before? Yes, yes. Always nice to know somebody. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, did you know John Hammer or Gina Davis previous to this at all? or? Gina, not at all. Uh, John I had met very slightly, uh, really through um, a friend of his, with a friend of mine, but not, I really didn't know him, mm -hmm. but had met. Lovely, lovely uh, person, lovely to work with, lovely. Yeah. yeah. How did you develop 
chemistry? Was there a lot of rehearsal for the film to oh, kind of no. build up the? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, it was really different. For one thing, he was an older Walter, Walter Prime, than I had had on the stage, either production. Um, more like 40s and uh, not 30s. It, it, that was different, but perfectly fine. Um, it's awfully well written, so you know, yes. you really uh, are in in good hands. You know how it is when when the text is holding you up, and that's how it was. Yeah, yeah. And how did you approach playing Marjorie differently than playing Marjorie Prime? In the course of rehearsals, um, it became clear, actually, and uh, this was true in both stage productions, and when we did the film, I had only had one, but Jordan was clear that the primes were not to be uh, r robotic. And in the case of Marjorie, um, Uh, the sense of supportive presence was emphasized in the working out of the play and rehearsals. Um, so I think that <clears throat> might be a key to what was different. Mm -hmm. um, hard to say, because again, part of the fun playing it is the ways in which you discover what it is to know and not know what's in <laughs> there, you know? Yeah. Um, you've had a remarkable life and career. We want to talk about, uh, you know, the, the span of your, uh, of your time. Uh, so you were born in Topeka, Kansas, yes. right? Yes, yes. Um, did you always want to be an actor, or when did you discover acting? I guess um, it clearly started when I was a very small child, and my father who was not in any sense a theater person, except that he worked for the telephone company and he had taken night school lessons in acting and directing before my time, and I'll never really know exactly how that came about. But the reason for it was to put on plays in the church. It, we were Protestants in the Midwest, and he did. And I followed him to rehearsals and always was there and learned the lines, and if there was something for me to do, I did it. So that's clearly how it started. And yes, I think I always wanted to do it, liked to do it. I think it was a, I was shy when I was little, um, but that was not a place to be shy somehow. Uh, that's probably a lot of people's story, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what James Dean was like to work with? Yes, lovely, yes. Yeah. He was so good. Oh, he was good, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and so you, you studied with Lee Strasberg, correct? I, I was a member of the actors. Well, yes, I took a, a course with him, actually. Uh, and not long after that, I had auditioned for the actors' studio twice, I guess, and the second time got in, yeah. yeah. So I, but that was mostly where I worked with him. Um, I mean, he's such a legendary figure. What was the most important lesson that you learned from him? Do you remember something specific that you still carry with you? I remember having the feeling that he could look through actors. It was almost like an x-ray machine. Uh, that seemed almost uncanny. He was very perceptive. I think I feel, it's so hard to say, one learns a lot, especially, I guess, maybe when you're young, and I was. I sometimes feel that that what I take away with me from those days at the studio maybe more importantly than anything else, so that's hard to say, is, is the system of learning to work and listen. It, um, learning uh, what, what, it, what the responsibility is. You, co you come to, to a session with your, with your work which you present, and then, especially when, when Lee was alive and was running the sessions, uh, 
uh, you, the first thing is you account for yourself. Now, this, that seems to me so important. And then sometimes Lee would call on people to comment, and the comment was only to be what you saw and what the person said they were about. That is not an not interpretation of one's own. That that seems to me so important. It was a way of learning, not only to, about the work one brings and what the responsibility and attention is, but how to watch and address and um, be in the place where we're all getting somewhere, not just blathering, you know. And that was very important to me, and it still is. I think I learned something. I'm maybe not being able to say it very well, but that matters to me. Oh, I think you said it beautifully. Um, since this is for the Screen Actors Guild after Foundation, uh, do you remember what role got you your side card? Would it have been East of Eden? Or? East of Eden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember the feeling when you got it? I mean, oh, were... boy. I, I mean, I was <laughs> so fortunate. I, I, uh, I came to New York, and within the first... This was in the 50s. It was a very different. Um, I, got, I got my my first job was a Broadway play that ran all season. Uh, how about that? There were lots of Broadway plays that ran all season. It was very different. Um, and there was a lot of uh, live television in New York, television drama, not just a series, though there were a few, but there was drama anthologies, lots of them, like maybe eight or ten. It, uh, hard to believe, isn't it? Every, uh, and I, So I started working in television drama, which as a stage actor, one is ready to do. And um, there was Robert Montgomery Presents in Studio One and, and uh, um, the uh, Theater Guild, uh, U.S. Steel, uh, they went on and on, and there they were, usually one hour. But they were plays, a, a play each week. Amazing. So I started to do that. Yes. And, uh, and the East of Eden was my first movie, so I started to do that. And this was within a couple of years of my beginning. What good luck, is that, which meant that I was able to do those things, um, all three media from the beginning and to continue doing it. And therefore, I've made my living as an actor since I started. How blessed, how <laughs> blessed. <laughs> and it shouldn't be as hard as it is, but it, I know that I am extraordinarily lucky. It's very hard, if not impossible, in our country to make a living on the stage, I think all but impossible now. So instead of, uh, I'd had a lot of jobs of different kinds before this, but I didn't ever wait tables while I was acting professionally or, or, or the myriad other things that one does. So I was lucky. And then uh, you had a big uh, film experience uh, with Jack Nicholson. In five easy pieces. Yes, that was, oh, what a treat. <laughs> Won that the National was... Society of Film Critics Award. Ah. Uh, was he the one who was instrumental in you getting the role, or how, how did that come about? No, I believe uh, I was doing a production of Uncle Vanya uh, playing Sonia. I did it twice. Once I played Yelena, and then I played Sonia. Um, at the Mark Taper in L.A., and Harold Clerman was directing... And uh, Bob Rafelson was about to direct Jack Nicholson in uh, Five Easy Pieces. And uh, uh, one of his, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not so good at names. I'm sorry to say I'm not going to be able to say it right now. One of the production people came uh, on Bob's suggestion, came to see me in, um, five, in Uncle Vanya. So that's how, really how I got the part, I think, through Bob Rafelson. And, and how was it? And he knew, Bob Rafelson, I think, knew me from uh, live television, or by then it may have been tape television in New York, mm -hmm. uh, where I did a lot of work. Yeah. How was it working with Jack? I mean, you were his sister in the film, correct? He, terrific, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything you hoped for? 
Um, and they also uh, worked at Barbara Streisand on Up to I Sandbox. I did once, a, a, little, a little scene in, um, you know, I, I don't even know where that movie is. I haven't seen, I was thinking the other day, wouldn't it be fun to see that scene? Yeah. It was just a little bit of a part, it was her friend. Of it. So I don't know much about that, but that was nice, <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> Um, I've hung out with a lot of stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've also worked with some some very good directors. I um, I was actually just interviewing Adrian Lyne recently, and he was talking oh about gosh. how he's directed you several times, yeah. uh, including Fatal Attraction, where you played. Michael oh, Douglas I had Secretary. almost nothing to do, but yes, that was that was nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, is it, is it helpful when you're able to work with filmmakers, you know, multiple times? Is it, is it yes. With Bob Rafelson, that was fun. Uh, Bob Rafelson hired me. Uh, oh, I, I did a part in Black Widow, and I remember saying, "Stick with me, kid. You'll work every sixteen years." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also wanted to ask you about the film Resurrection because uh, Sam Shepard was in that film, and he, we recently lost him. God bless him. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. That was when I first met Sam. We were both acting in it. We had nothing to do with each other in the film story. But on a day off, uh, what a lovely person. He, he took uh, me and a couple of others to Austin, a city that he knew and loved, and uh, took us just for fun on the day off and to dinner at a place he liked. Uh, and that was my first meeting with him. And then later, um, at Steppenwolf, uh, Gary Sinise wanted to do a revival of Buried Child, which I had seen in New York early on when it was first done. It was a, a, an odd experience. I was extremely affected by it. But I came to understand when, I, when Gary asked me to read it again that I had, that I only remembered part of it. It was as though it was too much for me and I didn't have it all. So that was a very exciting thing to go to, to read this play. And, um, and Sam wanted to work on it some more. So he was with us in the, step, in the uh, Steppenwolf rehearsal and again in the Broadway rehearsal because he was working on the script. And I, it, it's one of the things I treasure a lot, I think partly because of Gary's bulldog-like tenacity of at first, it seemed like, oh, we, none of us are going to live through this. And he's an actor. He should know better than to treat us this way. And then I came to understand if he hadn't done what he had done, to he so knew how he wanted to establish the dynamics of this play. And once he had done that, then he was willing to say what you had to offer and to say yes, yes. It was one of the really big, uh, for me, uh, well, just an important experience and learning, and uh, I'm proud of it. And I know Gary is too. I had a note from him. I don't hear from him much, but I just the other day after Sam's Sam's death, and then many years later, I had been to a screening and was on my way from the screening to a party. And walking along the street, Sam said to me, "I'm writing a play, and I'm writing a part for you." Well, that's pretty great. And I thought, oh, that's wonderful. But then you th get home and you think, mm, well, you know, easy to say, let's not get too excited. <laughs> and then Jim Houghton at Signature called to say, yeah, it's true. And to send me th the drafts that Sam was sending him along the way, the play Heartless, which we did at Signature about five years ago, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I also want to ask you about one of my personal favorite films, uh, Midnight Run. With uh, <laughs> <laughs> again, uh, Charles Grodin and Robert yes, De Niro. Yes, but uh, actually, I believe my part may be a voiceover. <laughs> it may actually be. Uh, it was a teeny little thing. I remember. Uh, when, uh, well, well, do you want to do it or not? Because there was hardly anything there, and it was being shot about in the '60s, I think, on the West Side. My little moment, and I lived about. 20 blocks away, and I walked over, shot the thing, and went home. But I really think that you don't see me. If you see me, maybe you see. But it's there was mostly I went into this 
truck where we recorded something at telephone. I hardly remember it. That's a favorite movie. Well, it's not because of me. <laughs> um, well, I also want to ask you about a couple of other films uh, that, that you did that were very popular. Uh, Fried Green Tomatoes. The lovely, yeah. And uh, How to Make an American Quilt. Nice, nice too, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Nice, um, yeah. And those are films with large female yeah. ensembles. Yeah. Is that... Uh, make a difference to you when you're on the set? I mean, does it change the the energy or is it just a matter of individual personalities that really d define that? Yeah, sure. It's always different if it's mostly female and mostly... But, yeah, it does. That, I don't know that it's better or worse, but it's different. Yeah. 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 And then you worked with Michael Douglas again after a Fatal Attraction and Falling Down. Yes. He yes. played his mother. Yeah. yeah. Um, Although my work was with uh, Robert Duvall. Yeah. I was... Michael Douglas's mother, but right, we were right. not close. His mother and son. <laughs> and you've also done some some big action movies. I mean, you were in Twister. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was a nice part. A lot yeah, of fun. That yeah, was. I mean, although a lot of fun in certain ways, but oh, the, you know, things really. It was dangerous, hard, bad things happened. Oh, it was not. Uh, there was a lot of difficulty, yeah. but the movie was also. I loved the part and. And the movie seems to endure, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you worked with Bill Murray on Larger Than Life? Yes, yes. It seems like everyone has a Bill Murray story. I'm wondering <laughs> if you have a Bill Murray story that you can share. No, I'm not. He, he made me laugh. I, I mean, that's the truth, and that was, that was nice. <laughs> but no, no particular story. <laughs> and then uh, you worked with Jack Nicholson again on The Pledge. Yes. Uh, which Sean Penn directed. Yes, um, yeah. What was it like to work with him again oh it was fine but it it it's didn't it was it felt like a movie that wasn't happening properly i that's how it feels to me i you yeah. know yeah yeah um and minority reports oh that uh, was steven fun. spielberg uh a sci-fi movie but a very different kind of sci-fi movie than, than marjorie prime yeah. uh how was that experience uh working with spielberg and being on such a big that was terrific, and I was, again, boy, did I have good luck. When I got the part, uh, my mom, first thing I heard, I think, was, well, he, it's good news and bad news. Um, he'd really like Meryl Streep, but if he can't have her, he wants you. <laughs> And then they wouldn't give me the script because you know how stingy they are with them. And, uh, and it, it, you know, I said, well, he's rewriting, et cetera, et cetera. And finally I said, you know, I was getting ready to get on the plane and I really have to. So they did send it to me and certainly my, my scene. And I went there and I had costume fittings and everything about the way it was done, he is so smart and capable. Steven Spielberg, got by feel. Um, I was taken to where he was working on the set in order to look at what I was wearing and okay it, so it was very clear. And then he made an arrangement to have a, a, a quick rehearsal, not so quick, an hour, maybe another hour, with Tom on the scene. And uh, this was like on maybe Friday, I, and we were gonna shoot my stuff on Monday. Well, if I hadn't had that rehearsal, which not everybody got, that was just really good luck. I learned what it wanted, how he had, what he had it in, in mind. And so I came knowing that much, and it was lots to learn. I did most of the talking. But again, I feel what good luck to have had that preparation, of which there is not a lot in when you're shooting a movie often, as you know. Um, so that, that was a pleasure. And you have I felt like, we, I remember thinking, I said, to, I said to Tom, it's like we're doing the importance of being earnest, because it was just, <laughs> that's what he wanted, no, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you, you've moved back and forth between film and television, and you had a, a stint on True Blood. I did. <laughs> After that, I am now more known to younger people than I was. <laughs> And how do they re how do they respond to you? I mean, uh, generally, it's the character which is uh, beloved. Isn't that nice? She yeah. didn't last very long, but <laughs> she was nice. Yeah. And uh, you're still going strong. I mean, last year you were in the Nice Guys, 
yeah. uh, with Ryan Gosling and, and Russell Crowe. That's yeah. not a bad day at work. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, what was that experience like? Well, uh, making it? just before the first shot, uh, what's his, Jack, what's his name? Who's directed it? I'm so bad. Oh. Shane Black. Shane, Shane Black. Yeah. Shane. Yeah. Sorry. Handed me a pair of comedy Coke bottle glasses. Actually, just before the first shot. How about that? And I couldn't see. I was unbalanced. <laughs> so that was a little odd. But <laughs> I had I had I had some fun. Though. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, the comedian, you were uh, back with Robert De Niro. You actually showed up on <laughs> film in that one, as I recall. <laughs> right, right, right. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. That, yeah, yeah. That was, that was sweet, yeah. And, uh, and, and you're still going. I mean, Grace and Frankie, you did a couple of episodes with uh, Jane yes. Fonda and Lily Tomlin. And, yes, uh, I did, yeah. And uh, yeah. just a couple weeks ago, you were on Younger. On, on TV, <laughs> that's right. There's been a lot of little bit of <laughs> little bits of television this year. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, this is more than a little bit, Marjorie Prime. I mean, this is oh a uh, major... yes, I don't consider this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I have little bits of television episodes. That's what I meant. Yes, yes, yes. I, this past year, I've been, I've had some of those, and thank God. But, yeah. You know. So, what is it like to get a role like Marjorie Prime at this stage of your blessed, career? Blessed, blessed. I. Oh, boy, that's another way. You know, you think, well, the story is as you get older, there's less and less and less roles. And I just had not that experience. I am so fortunate. I've been getting interesting, good roles. Oh, and I still am. So, really. <laughs> and, uh, And there's uh, some talk about uh, Oscar possibility coming up. I mean, is that something that you... Uh... <laughs> you know who talks about Oscar possibilities? The people who produce a movie. They say, well, uh, okay, God bless you, but... <laughs> um, Where did you hear that? Oh, well, you know, just... I, I, I read did it on you the, make it up? I read it on the internet, so it may be fake news. I don't know, but I think it's real. Um, <laughs> So what's the best piece of advice that you've ever gotten from another actor that you can pass along to this group of actors here tonight? Ooh. Huh. I was about to walk on stage. This was many years ago in a play called The Young and Beautiful. Um, Doug Watson was my partner. We were standing in the wings, and the scene was about to begin. The curtain was just about to go up, and the lights. And he said, would you like me to do something really nice for you? <laughs> and he said, you've got clips in your hair. They were The curler clips were still there. <laughs> No, I know that's not the kind of thing you were asking, but that's what that's what came to mind. Uh, we're we're almost out of time, but we have a couple questions from the audience. So I just wanted to read uh, read these to you. Uh, this is a question from Lorraine. Uh, she's talking about a book about Ilya Kazan, and uh, apparently in the book he said that you and Julie Harris were the peacemakers on the set of East and East of Eden. And she's wondering if you could elaborate on that. How were you a peacemaker on the set of East of Eden? Do you recall playing that kind of a role? I don't, no. <laughs> um, I could imagine it as Julie much more. Uh, for one thing, her character and her work was much... M I think there was tension between Raymond Massey and uh, uh, James Dean, which I've heard. I was not privy to that, but... Um, I don't know what, I truly don't know what yeah, that means, yeah. no. Two-part question. So also, uh, Tennessee Williams raved about uh, you as Amanda in The Glass Menagerie. Can you talk about your process of doing that role? I don't think that's possible. The only time I ever approached Amanda, I'm sorry to say, a friend of mine, uh, David Shukoff, was, this is many years ago, was directing uh, at Lincoln Center in the summertime when um, 
they were doing the glass menagerie and then they were going to send people to schools, you know. So they were, they were doing it only for this convocation of teachers for a, a, a few performances, as I remember. And so I, it was a friend, a wonderful play. I worked on it. It was so hard. That part is so long. And I'm sure Tennessee Williams had nothing to do with that. I, it's, I, where do these things come? I don't believe, I don't believe that's true. Yeah. This also could be for the internet. Uh, our last question uh, from Jean Marie. And uh, this is a hard question, too, but since this is a film about memory, what is your most memorable experience on a film set in your career? Impossible, those questions, because it's like when somebody says, oh, what's your favorite film or what's your favorite play? And, and some wise person I know used to answer, the last one. <laughs> um, but... I, I, I don't know. At least off the spur of the moment. I'm sorry. I. Well, could it be Marjorie Prime? I mean, <laughs> the experience on the set. You see, that seems to. You know, it's like well, the side of the mountain came down, and I, I, I don't know. I, uh, because sometimes the most important moments are the quietest ones, but. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. That's sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Lois Smith.